Dolphin Michael leads the Avenue of Fashion Business Association on Livernoy, on Detroit's northwest side. Well, what a lot of people don't know is that the Avenue of Fashion has the highest concentration of black uh, business ownership in the country. Not just in Detroit, not just in Michigan, but in the country, in the United States. Detroit District 2 manager Kim Tandy has some challenges this summer. There's full-on construction the length of the avenue, and the street-side parking, gone, till further notice. You know, construction is hard on everybody, so we knew that there was going to be some kind of construction, so we've been working with the businesses for the past three years to try and get people prepared for it. But because of the intensified construction, businesses got hit a little bit harder than what we thought would have happened from the beginning. Originally, when the uh, city uh, was explaining uh, what they wanted to do, it was only supposed to be for a four-block area. Once that was approved, then all of a sudden, oh, by the way, we're taking it down to eight miles. The businesses were very concerned about having construction on Livernois for two years, so we really pushed the contractor, and so the contractor pushed this into a one-year project. Should have started in May. We had a little bit of a, a, a two-week delay from council and then had some rain delays, and then we'll go until November. The city had lots of meetings with the business community uh, to talk about it. I don't think anybody realized just how disruptive it would be. I appreciate, you know, having change, but it's just really hurting business. I mean, if you look down the street right now, I don't see anybody walking. There's nobody coming from that way. And there's nobody coming from that way. <laughs> so there's nobody. <laughs> it's just devastating. C. Granston uh, Bullard is part of the fashion business on the Avenue of Fashion. Designer, retailer, and distributor, all under one roof. I'm a native Detroiter, came an alumni of Mumford High School. My mother was actually a dressmaker on Livernois. One of my colleagues said, instead of going out to Orchard Lake Road or Northwestern Highway, why don't you come back and bring your talent to the city? During normal business, our numbers as far as foot traffic would be anywhere from 25 to 30 people a day. And now we're down to one, two, less than one hand, four or five people a day, one or two. Uh, our numbers are off, according to my QuickBooks, by about 70 percent. It has affected my bottom line. Tawanda Coleman's hair salon serves a lot of older customers. Her business is off, too. Uh, probably like 50 percent of I, my clients has kind of rescheduled, kind of want to wait for a while till after the construction is kind of over before they decide to come back. Further up the avenue, the 313 store opened this spring. Owner Clement Brown has to find other ways to move his Detroit themed merchandise. What I've been very intentional about doing is uh, making our internet and our online sales more robust. And it's been helping. It's not enough, but it's better than where we were. The city response is, is, is actually getting a lot better than what it was initially. Initially, the only response we got was we don't have any money and uh, you guys aren't getting any money. If we do it for you guys, we got to do it for everybody else. That was the city's response up until the time we started making noise. So what we ended up doing was working with the business owners here that had private lots. And so those lots have now become public lots and we have a shuttle that's going up and down the street so people can park in all these public lots, get on the shuttle, enjoy all of Livernoy and get to where they want to go. The shuttle is one of the positive things about this construction. They're going up and down Livernoy Monday through Friday from 12 until 7, and then on Saturdays from 12 until 7, they actually go into the neighborhood as well. Definitely the shuttle is good. We're grateful for the shuttle. We just need to know exactly where's the shuttle spot, so where they're going to be stopping, where they're going to be picking up, so that's kind of an issue with us right now. They don't call for a ride, do they? No, no, no call. No, they do stand out there and flag you down. Riders are always happy to see you. They get out the sun and get in some cool air. Here's the shuttle right now. So, you know, people know about it, but again, even if they get the shuttle, they still have to walk on this unlevel ground to get to the businesses. We just had an elderly man. It took him about 30 minutes just to get down the street, man, because we were supposed to have access to our buildings, to our businesses. And now we're walking through, feel like Barney Rubble and Fred Flintstone through the gravel pit. With construction, you never know the end date. They give you an end date, but it's not over until it's over, until they're done, until they're fully completed. The UPS guy, the, poor, the, the struggle to get our packages from the UPS man. God bless them. That's right. One thing that I do want to make sure that everybody understands is that 
there's a room out here that we're going to go into next year. This project is will be finished. All of the concrete on this project will be finished this year. So all of the streets and all of the sidewalks will be repaired and put back by November. November, a month to remember. Cuzzo's, the popular chicken and waffles place, closed now for renovations. As it says on the window, opening again in November. Uh, we had uh, 18 businesses that were scheduled to open up this year. This was going to be uh, the Avenue of Fashion breakout year. We've had a lot of businesses, uh, restaurants that decided to, uh, not to open up now. One of them is planned by Motor City Match Awardee Kelly McBride on the north end of the avenue with a restaurant called Petty Cash, upscale dining where the O'Quinn's Shrimp House used to be. So now the project has been probably pushed back to maybe spring. But, I mean, what are you going to do? It's, it is what it is. Joining me now is Hugh Smith. You are the co-owner of world-famous mm -hmm. Baker's Keyboard Lounge. The Thanks for having oldest us. world's oldest jazz club. It's a really amazing, the mm -hmm. institution that this place is. Mm -hmm. um, when I was walking in, I saw on your marquee, it said, we are open. Yes. And that feels to be the, the sentiment all up and down the Avenue of Fashion on Livernoy here. Yes, that's a call to the community to say, listen, we are open, we're vibrant, and we're ready for business. Don't forget us. So mm -hmm. what has happened to your business? Honestly, um, since this uh, project, the construction project has started. Yeah, we've been deeply impacted as everyone else here on Livernoise Avenue. Mm -hmm. um, Bakers, we have lost about 40% of our, in our revenue, our income. We're losing $15,000 a week. It can't be understated. It's so hard when you rely on some foot traffic and you don't have the foot traffic right now. It's, Im it's impossible with what we're working it's with out there. It's impossible and that should have also been considered in the assessment of the whole project. And that's where we are as um, the Livernoise Avenue of Fashion business owners. We're saying, listen, this thing could have been assessed differently because we do depend on foot traffic. So they should install that and incorporate it into the model. So let's be honest about it. What have you been doing in terms of working with the city and how has the city kind of come back to the table and said, you know, maybe we made a mistake here and how we planned out this project, mm -hmm. but let's work on how we can help out these businesses. Well, listen, from the top down, uh, Mayor Duggan has done a great job in saying he wants to know what's going on. He wants to um, have an understanding of what the problems are. Arthur Jamison, Kim Tandy, and others have come together to his aid to advise him. But I have to say the DEGC with Kevin Johnson, they have parachuted in and said, how can we have a solution now? Because that's what businesses need more than anything. They need a solution now. So when you say solution, are we talking subsidies? We're, we're, we're again, we're not looking for any handouts here. What we're looking for is, listen, our businesses have been impacted. So we're saying, how can the city come up with programs packages, grants that can help businesses stay alive during these tough times of this streetscape project. Because we're reaching September here and yes. they say the project is supposed to be finished in November? <laughs> That's what they say, but no, they have expanded that maybe to 2020. Um, that being said, with that kind of um, delay, without help from the city, we need them now to come up with a solution now. Not a smaller loan or micro loans, but we need them to invest in the city uh, of Livernoy Avenue of Fashion, invest in it so that the businesses can stay alive. 